Okay, so I have everything kind of set up. Now I'm just doing refined selections and kind of darkening and lightening, working from the background, working, I'm sorry, from the foreground back. So I'm going to take my foreground element. I'm going to play with its levels. Because it's in the foreground, I'm going to push it a little bit brighter and push its shadows a little bit darker. And you, you decide, right, for your image, because the foreground is something you're going to be kind of looking past. Should it be a brighter silhouette or should it be a darker silhouette? And for me, I need it to be a little bit brighter as we get into the moodiness and the contrast of the, of the middle ground here. So that all works. Now I go behind it. And to contrast it even more, I'm looking at this element. I'm using my low opacity, only about 30% opacity brush with a very soft edge. And by taking a lower opacity eraser, there's no hard edges I need to absolutely get rid of because everything is already kind of working. I'm just picking kind of the lights and darks that I like. So I might knock this back a little. Or I could always use the burn tool for it. So Drew, you're asking about the burn tool. So you pick the layer you want. Yep, the layer you, you wish to darken. And then you click on the burn tool. I always set it to midtones first, a pretty low exposure, and you'll see it will burn down the pixels there. It just darkens the pixels. The dodge tool, it does the opposite. It will brighten the pixels. All right. In fact, I might use the dodge tool to brighten the midtones of this layer behind. But I like the texture of it, but it's a little too colorful. So then I'm going to use the sponge tool to desaturate it. Take some of that color back. This could be helpful in my mountains as well. And so I'm not erasing, I'm just burning. And it already helps to kind of blend these edges together. But always think of the big picture as well. What's believable? I don't want to lose the edge on that. Yeah, on that ground plane. So it's always dangerous to be too uh, zoomed in. Okay, now I'm going to take this tree, let's see, from this layer. And this is playing with some internal edges as well. I'm going to take a bunch of this tree, copy it. So I'm making a new element out of an existing element. Whoops. And move it to the other side. Where's that copy I just made? There it is. Move it to the other side, transform it, flip it horizontal. All right. This is where your cartoon jumble comes in. All those skills. I just want to put a little bit of that, that treeness texture to help push the middle ground from the background here. And then I'm going to Dodge it just a little bit, catch some light, and I'm going to erase away from it, make it the shape I want. I don't need all of that. All 
I just need a little bit of that texture coming through. All right. Same thing, I might burn. This is just dodging and burning. We're gonna be doing a lot more of it. Burn a little bit more of this more middle ground ice flow. Help that set behind my foreground. Can burn a little bit of its reflection, so that's a little bit stronger. And then erase away a little bit of these transitions. I like all the color I'm getting. Okay, now let's move into the background. A lot of layers now. So the edge of these mountains, I'm just going to use that eraser. It's at the 30%. I'm using my tablet so I can control the size. Bless you of the cursor. So if I press lightly, the circle will be smaller, but I want it to feel like this mountain mist. And it would be a mistake just to get rid of all of it because then it wouldn't help push the, uh, push the idea of it being far away. In reality, our eyes can't focus on everything at once. So our eyes, could either focus on the far background and then all the foreground would be blurry or our eyes could focus on the on the foreground and the background would be blurry here everything is in focus so far but by having some of these kind of transitions that are more subtle and the atmosphere kind of builds up in between it helps it feel like it's further away and we're going to do that by building up some atmospheric perspective with a texture overlay. Now I kind of like this. It looks like there's a lake. Even though that was sky originally, I can play that up with what I erase. So it looks like the edge of a, a water, a body of water back there. Might be nice. This is where the creativity comes in. Remember, it's your composition. You decide what you can get away with and what you can't. And resist the urge to be zoomed in all the time, only working on details. Make sure you're looking at the big picture every once in a while. Okay. One more hit. I can unlock these background ones. Give the give that the same sort of consideration. What's uploading the folder looking like right now for criticism? Uh, yes, I'm going to show you how to save. So the, the I'll, this will be the final little video, and I'll show you how to, how we save it and upload it, and then we'll do our critiques. You're going to upload our sketch, and then we're going to upload our progress thus far. There it is. OK, 
Okay, so the last thing I want to show, and there's lots more, you know, that we could work on, is what's called a texture overlay. And there's a little bolt of lightning here in one of these references that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to show you how with the idea of a texture overlay. So I'm going to take this layer, grab some of its light and texture, like so. Actually, I'll probably grab something more subtle like this. Duplicate it. Bring it on top of the area <laughs> that I want to cover up, that lightning bolt, right? And then use my... 100% soft eraser to blend in, blend in its edges. Now that's just on a little spot like that, and then I'm going to uh, use the sponge tool a little bit to take out a little bit of that color, not too much, and then lower lower opacity. Now that I've taken away the hard edge eraser to kind of blend it in. Voila, no more lightning. But if we do that to the whole image, we have what's called a texture overlay. Okay, very good. So I'm going to save my work here. I'm gonna to go to the very top layer, even above my sketch. And I'm going to go to Google Google Chrome and go to Google Images and I want a frosty wind. <laughs> you just look up a, descri a description of the atmosphere you want. So if it's like a, a sandstorm in the desert, you can look that up. I want to go to Images and I want to look up frosty wind texture overlay because sometimes designers make this available to you. And then I'm going to go to Tools, and for this, I want it larger than four megapixels. Here we have a lot of nice textures from photographers of frost, right, and sleet. Now what kind of fits my image? Something that's not too flat looking, This one actually fits pretty well. It's more directional. So just like any reference, I want to make sure it's good quality. So I open image and new tab, and it's not. It's a bad image. Bad, bad image. So let's look for another one, maybe this one. Open image and new tab. Bad image. All right, these are letting me down. I think because they're mostly from like wallpaper sites and they've taken down their large one. I think wallpaper sites, like they don't render it all the way on yep. Google images. You have, to, you have to open it in their browser. That's often the case. All right, this is kind of an interesting one. I can use it. It's a little sharp, but I can use it. Okay, I'm going to save it to my references. Save it somewhere. Save image. Oh, there it is. Good. Then I'm going to bring it into Photoshop on top of everything else. Like so. Then I'm going to stretch it so it covers everything. Like so. I am going to rasterize it so I can edit it. I'm going to take its opacity down. And I see that those sharp edges aren't all that helpful. They might be helpful in the foreground. You see kind of the iciness. But now this looks like I'm looking through a window, a frosted window. So I'm going to go to filter. And this is the only filter we use. I go to blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to take those sharp edges down by blurring them because it's the color and the, the organic variation I want. Then I'm going to take the opacity down, and that's a basic texture fill right there. It just looks misty and cloudy. Now if I push that down below 